So before we go into rigging, I'm just going to give a basic overview of the plastic tool. So the plastic tool, which is over here, will have a menu, and the very first thing you'll see in the menu is Create Mesh. Create Mesh will basically create a mesh around your drawing, which is based off the drawing's alpha channel. Generally be very accurate with vector, with vector levels, less accurate with raster levels. So if we click Create Mesh, we will get this menu over here, and we can basically control the detail of the mesh and how much of the mesh will overshoot the drawing. If we apply it, we will get our mesh, and then we will have a skeleton which we'll get into when we actually build the rig. We have the mode which has various options. Edit Mesh will allow you to manipulate the mesh itself. Paint Rigid would be once you've created a skeleton you can determine which areas are more rigid and which are more flexible. Build Skeleton which is what will determine how you how your skeleton deforms the rig. And Animate where you will animate the rig go to build skeleton, we can draw our controls over here and this is a skeletal rig which is a rig using forward kinematics and there are some limitations because of that and unfortunately it is the only method of deformation at some point in the future we may have curve based deformations at the moment it's only skeletal deformation so if I go to animate and I want to animate the rig I will just drag the points and I will get skeletal ro rotations based on those points each of these points has their own stacking order so you can move the mesh forward and backwards at the points of the vertices and then if we click on keep distance we can stretch parts of the mesh and get squash and stretch through that rest and angle bounds will allow you to clamp the rotation within a certain angle if you so choose. Um, it's not necessarily the most important thing to be able to limit the rotations on the rig, but it can be useful in certain situations. So we're just going to move these columns and Take a look at this. Now, if we turn this into a mesh, just give it a few edges. Okay. We turn this into a mesh. What we can do is we can edit this mesh. So to edit the mesh, if we were to go over here and go to edit mesh, we can now move the points on the mesh and you can do various things in edit mesh. So for example, if I go over here and click on this line, if I right click, we've got split edge, which will subdivide that line. If I click again, we've got Collapse Edge, which will collapse everything to a point. And we also have Swap Edge, which will rotate the edge along the internal angles of the polygon, which it is 
Now, one other thing which we could do is we can split edges. So what I'm going to do here is quickly going to make a seam. Unfortunately, edges which you split cannot be fused back together from what I know. Um, but if we want to, for example, create a seam with these edges, if I hold down Control and select them, I can now select a line and if I right click on that, I have the cut mesh option which has now split these edges so that if I move the points you'll see that there's now a hole in the mesh. And this will allow different things with animation. So if I was to now build the skeleton, um, because it's a skeleton everything has to come off a root. Um, very rough um, and here I will make multiple joints just to give a bit more control over the fall off give the idea should then be able to get a effect where we can animate a bit of a mouth option here. Um, this does have limitations. If you had purely curve based deformers it may be easier to get a more consistent effect and when you are trying to move the outer levels it will move the chain from the vertex so every vertex you move is going to remove all the subsequent ones around the direct chain of that vertex but it does give possibilities for quite a wide range of effects if you use it cleverly Okay, so now we are going to read the character. So if we go to the schematic, see that one of the th things I've done is I have made all of the drawings, which are part of the face, a child of the head. And basically if I want to rotate the head, everything should basically follow the head's rotation. So the entire face will follow along with their hair and that is basically what we want because I am not going to be animating the rotational translation of anything on the head. So it is only going to be affected by the head and in this case we're going to set up the rig so we don't actually even rotate the head. So basically anything which we do with the head or the face will basically be with reordering and swapping of drawings. Now um, we are going to make five plastic meshes. We're going to make meshes for the torso, for the arms and for the legs. And I am 
pretty much going to keep these meshes as the static, as the kind of default plastic meshes. What you will see is that it has produced two different meshes, one for the front and one for the side of the torso. Same should happen with the legs. Arms. created all of our plastic meshes. So what I'm going to rig first is the character's torso. The torso is basically the center of the character and everything will run around what we do with the torso. Uh, so we'll just go to our build skeleton and I'm going to start at about here hips and just a vertex in the middle to control the waist and then one for the upper part of the chest and then one for the neck and then I'm going to make a vertex for the head now, this vertex isn't actually going to deform much above the neck, but we are going to use it to control the head's movement. Now, the ordering of vertices is very important. And the reason it is very important is when you have multiple views, you do not want to change the order of the vertices because anything which is parented is going to be parented based of the orders of the vertices and each vertices you'll see it starts with the root which is vertices 1 next one over here is vertex 2 uh, if I want to rename this I can rename this to in this case waist this so now I've renamed the word C so it's easier to see which one I am dealing with I've left the 
hips as root just so that I can remember what my root vertices is. Now what you'll see is when I go to the side these vertices aren't exactly where I want them to be but if I was to for example move the head and go back up we do not want that to, ha to happen. We do not want the head to be separate and moved around because of the side view. So what we're going to do is instead of use this skeleton we're going to make another one. When you are making turnarounds if we go to over here to skeleton and click on the plus button we will now generate a, another skeleton and we are going to generate a skeleton for the side of the rig and I'm just going to name these as well Now, what you'll see is it'll give me a message, but I will still retain all the vertex names over here. And this can be important for what we are going to do later. So the next thing which we are going to want to do is we are going to want to attach the head to this mesh and that can be a little bit tricky. Um, so I'm just going to get the head and I'm just going to go to the schematic. going to be a bit more messy, just tidy it up again. So what we're going to want is the torso and we're going to want to make the head a child of the mesh. But we are not just going to plug the head into no, B. While that appears to work, it actually is not going to be useful for what we want to do. Uh, we want to actually link it to input A. And you will see that it creates a, another input. Then if we hover our mouse above input A, we get these arrows to the side. And if we shift through these arrows, 
you'll see that there are numbers which come up. And those numbers are actually going to be the vertices on the bones. So if we go to our we go over here and look at the bones, we will see that we want to attach it in this case to number four. And what you'll see is that the head has been offset. And the reason the head has been offset is it has moved the center of the head upwards. And we actually just want to move the head back so that it is going to be in the correct place. And then we want to move center for the head to where we want the head to rotate around. So what we'll see now if we change this to animate, no effect on the head, but the neck will have the head following the shoulders or the torso. And we'll see that there is no inherited rotation. So if we put it that way the head maintains its angle. And we're going to use a little trick to change that. And to do that we are going to go to Windows and then we are going to go to the Function Editor. And we are going to take a look at the column numbers. We're going to look for the torso which is column 13. We're going to need to remember that it is column 13. And then we are going to go to the head and we are going to choose the head's rotation and then what we are going to do is we're going to apply an expression here and that expression is going to be vertex. Vertex will get you the vertices from the bones of the plastic mesh and then we're going to put in 13 which is the column number and then we're going to put in the name of the vertex and I have renamed those to the, in both skeletons they are head and by renaming them to the same thing it should work for both sides of the rig. And then if we apply that, we should now, when we move the bone for the head, get the rotation for the head from the final bone, which should also apply in the side view. So now we get to one of the complicated places when building the rig is if we choose to keep the shoulders over here then basically we will refer purely to vertex number three and you have no problems but if we want to have bones to make the shoulders more controllable. So if we go back to board skeleton and we 
of ourselves shoulders of the character what we will see is we now have vertex 6 and 7 and in order to connect the arms to the rig now when we go to the side view we are going to have to create not just one bone here but two there we'll have our vertex 6 and 7 over there then one other thing which I want to create in this rig is I'm just going to move the root up a tiny bit and I'm just going to create some bones to control the skirt so that if the character moves her legs especially in the side view if she steps forward you're going to need to have the skirt conform to her legs to do that we're just going to make some bones which come from the root to control the skirt if we need to we could also create bones from the root to control the jacket but I'm not going to do this, that at this point and with these the order is not going to matter as much for me because for the legs, I'm going to attach the legs to the root of the character rather than to any of these vertices. So now we'll take a look at the legs and So just making sure that they are in the right order. So these are currently the wrong way around. So just need to get the correct way around. And with the legs, we just want to attach the legs to the root vertices which we are going to do over here in the schematic so we to get ourselves a new node and we're going to hover over it once again and choose vertex 1 which is the root and we should now have our legs which appear to be close enough to where we want them overall of the center of the mesh just get them to match the original drawing just that little bit more Okay, and the legs require very little which is complicated. We just tied the torso so that we can create our bones. In this case I might actually have made the legs follow just a little bit higher, but it should be no problem. I can always compensate for that with the skirt. And just get the plastic tool and we will build our skeletons we're going 
just going to rename them. Then down to the side view where I will add a second skeleton. Then I will repeat the process for the second leg. Now we get to the arms, and the more important arm to pay attention to is arm 1. As I said in my previous videos, that everything which is visible on the side view of the character is number 1. So arm 1, I 1, I have chosen that those will all be visible on this side of the character. But if we get to the front view, torso. We get over here, arm 1 actually needs to be behind the torso over here. As I've said, there are numerous ways of sorting this thing, these things out. You can use various tools, but in this case I am going to once again stick with the stacking order, and I am going to have the stacking order be 1 in the side view for the mesh, and zero in the front view. So it will now be behind the mesh in the front view and in front of the mesh in the side view. At some point you may have to make sure that it is set correctly during the animation more often than not, it will stick with these values once you've applied them initially. And the hand will also require to have a stacking order of 1, which I will just leave as 1 in both views for because it will have less influence over here. If you are not the one animating the rig, I would recommend to say to anybody who is animating the rig to use 2 or negative 2 for all stacking orders where they want things to go in front or behind the characters. And that way you should never have problems. And I try to, wherever possible, never create stacking orders of more than one level where you are using stacking orders. Then we get to rigging the arm, and rigging the arm we're going to use a similar technique to the head, in that we are going to add an 
extra hand to the arm and control the hand with the final bow. Now, when we get to the final stages, you may have to finesse the drawings of the hands. What I have done with these drawings is to separate them. You'll see that I have continued the line for the arm in an arc, but those arcs are never perfect unless you played around with them quite a lot and you'd need to have actually got the center of the hand moved properly and then you'd need to work with the arc of the underlying drawing to make sure that it doesn't have any inconsistencies. Very often it's actually easier to fix those after you've done the main animation when you are doing the compositing at the final parts before sending scenes off to editing. Once again with the schematic, what we're going to do is we're going to parent the arms to the rig. And with that we're going to have to find our shoulder, which is in this case is vertex 6. So what we want is we want our arm one and we want to plug it into the A port which we are then going to hover over and choose vertex six and we are then going to reposition this mesh and with the meshes it is less important to reposition the centers because the deformation will come from the 
hand and not from the actual rotation of the drawing. So we'll just wait. Back. And then we are going to have to parent the hand to the arm. That should be on the wrist. Should be four. Let's check. Just a two. We've got the eleven. That gives me the three. Okay. And then I'm going to go to the function editor. And I'm going to set the expression on the hand hand one is rotation that expression will be for column six will be vertex Six and what angle? And now we should be able to. Control the hand with the slips. Now I'm just going to rig the other side of the mesh.
then the final thing which I'm going to do is I'm going to start cleaning the character up in the schematic. So, first thing I'm going to do in the schematic is I'm going to parent the mesh to the SRT. The scale rotation peg, which I made right at the beginning, which contains the shadow controls, now will allow me to move the entire character anywhere in the scene without having to worry about specific elements of the character.